Wouldn't you know it? We're live. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's a signal. It's not full of bats. Do not let it fool you. Bat signals. Then what's man. that squeaking out here? Oh, it's probably my chair. No, no, that no, no, that's the critter <laughs> infestation. <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? We are getting ready for another mm-hmm. weekly, daily Wednesdays. We are most definitely live, coming to you from yeah. LGC actual in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia. How's everyone doing in the middle of the week, man? The weather's changing. It's getting ready. It is pumpkin spice season. That's everywhere. I've seen it everywhere. It's a little terrifying, but you know what? In my old age, I've learned to accept pumpkin spice in my life. How about you, Pedro? <laughs> You know, I like cinnamon, but the prevalence of pumpkin spice uh, makes me not like cinnamon for this particular stretch of the year. Oh, thank you, Pedro. <laughs> I, I don't like cinnamon, <laughs> and it, I'm allergic to it. So I, I occasionally like a little tiny bit in like a, a pumpkin pie, but... Oh, uh, no, no, I, no, I really like cinnamon. I will buy like the uh, dried up cinnamon sticks, and I will chew on those. That's my candy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I just no. During this time of the year, I just no, no. We're, yeah, we're good. it's just too much. It's <laughs> overload. It's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Hello, Tis Arthur. The and hello, brother Jellybean. If you want to play a fun game, uh, we now have closed captioning enabled. So if you want to tap that CC button, if you're watching on your desktop. It'll come up, and there'll be entertaining things mm-hmm. to read as the show continues. <laughs> <laughs> and you here's can my absolutely sippy cup. bank suggest. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the new ones. I I had gotten a couple of these when I took that picture of me in my Star Trek mask. <laughs> They're so cute from the Dollar Tree. So I bought a couple different ones. <laughs> emoji. Why cups. is there an angel poop emoji? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> but I was pretty happy for a buck, so I got a couple different patterns. <laughs> but yes, you can absolutely bang suggest uh, something really funny that the CCs uh, came up with, but no promises. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'll have to rewatch LWW with the CC on. <laughs> yeah, Arthur, wearing the swag. I haven't worn this one in a while. <laughs> the only shirts that get reworn are our merch <laughs> on L- LWW. <laughs> Do you own any shirts that aren't t shirts with like Linux on Branding. them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I have, I have a couple dresses. No, I'm talking about stuff you wear, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, I have worn the dresses. Uh, every once in a while, I get out my tux dress. <laughs> the uh... and a skirt. I do have a penguin skirt, a Linux skirt. It's actually a tux skirt. <laughs> skirt. But you won't skirt. see it on skirt. 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 <laughs> Man, I was real. Did you see the thing Carmack posted? No. I saw your tweet, but I didn't look at the post. So Reznor went back and they're like, yo, we're going to redo the Quake album on vinyl for hipsters, right? Yeah. Hipsters and hoarders <laughs> rejoice, you know? And he's like, yo, I wrote a little thing for the album. You know, they can put it on. And Zenimax was like, no, we don't like Carmack now. He's bad. You can't include that with the release. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ah, uh, Bethesda. Then again, Carmack is the one who left for Facebook, so <laughs> decision making. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't even know what to make of it. That's just, uh, <sighs> you know, Zinimax is going to do what Zinimax does. Mm, that. I think it's mm-hmm. on the. Uh, <laughs> Come on, stored at nineedgenails.com. <laughs> Load. Hi, Steve, husband. There you are. 
There's a Steve. There it is. <laughs> we designed this reissue to include a booklet containing essays from id software's john carmack and american mcgee certain unnamed video game publisher made it impossible to include these packages uh so please honor their wishes by not clicking here to even see the essays or here to print the booklet yourself <laughs> oh what's that uh you don't want to increase the value of your thing okay here mm -hmm. it is for free <laughs> Well played! Well played, Trent. Well played. <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Um, you're familiar with Ben Hack, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was uh, mm -hmm. playing around with something and he was just rambling on. I had him on his background noise and he's like, Yeah, I remember when Trent Reznor emailed me a couple of years back. It was like 10 years ago. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked out in the room like what, where's this going it's, it's when he first made his Atari portable oh yeah yeah and mm -hmm. Reznor was like yo can you make me one and the tail ended with like yeah I forgot to get back to him <laughs> <laughs> but he thought it was interesting and kind of cute because the email's like, hi, I'm Trent Reznor. I play in a band called Nine Inch Nails. Um, he was like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Everyone knows who you are, dude. <laughs> I just thought that was cute. He's like, aw. He introduced himself. <laughs> hi, Adam X. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I'd take Arthur's word for it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Even the Pine Book Pro. I, I think I've gone through most of the different uh, distro images. And the Manjaro and the Debian ones are the only usable ones. Mm. And they have problems. <laughs> I was looking at that transparent case, and all I was thinking of man, I could <laughs> shove a week's worth of batteries in that thing. Because there's. <laughs> Yeah. Also, how's the case flex on the front, considering it's just hollow? <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I will be right back. So Take this, a break. somebody uh, <laughs> posted their um, Pine 64 running the, uh, they compiled the Mario 64 mm -hmm. on it at 30. Yeah, um, the thing, the reason that I've been trying all the uh, the different distro images is because I want the one that'll give me the least amount of grief when I finally get around to building Box 64 to try and install Steam on it. <laughs> Box 86, not Box 64. Um, because, yeah, no, on the Raspberry Pi, you just tell it, yeah, just build that, and it goes... Poof. There, done. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> On the Python Book Pro, you have so many issues. So many. <laughs> well, it's new, Pedro. What is? It is. It is, and that's part of the reason why I keep, you know, it's right here. It's mm -hmm. the closest laptop I have. <laughs> it's just because it's. I heard someone describe it, uh, if you'd like to go back to 2004 Linux and getting that to run on a laptop, mm -hmm. get one of these. <laughs> yeah. I think and it's uh, important. Pine, uh, if you want to send me a sticker. No. Nope. <laughs> don't. Don't do it. It's beta hardware. Um, <laughs> I personally blame Google for messing messing up the world um, with uh, it's it's all this all boils down to the reason people are having issues with this laptop it's because of Gmail I'm going to stick this together watch me how long was Gmail in beta uh, two years how three many, maybe okay hey, let, me, let me help Pedro how many decades was Gmail in beta <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the okay, uh, <laughs> one and a half? <laughs> it got everyone used to like, oh, yes, this, it works fine, but no, it, it says it's not ready, but that, it skewed people's perspective of what 
that meant. Yeah. <laughs> I could say the same thing with early access. You know, like when, when I. Oh, there's Strider's Pine Book. The OG one. The OG one? Yeah. The non pro. Hipster Pie. <laughs> Yeah, I looked at the OG one many, many times, like, yeah, $100, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So know. I waited, and then the pro came out, it's like, we support NVMe, it's like, yes, technically, I could move uh, everything to the NVMe drive and then just update the bootloader to load from the NVMe drive, mm -hmm. but, yeah, <laughs> even that's a bit shaky. <laughs> <laughs> look at look look at the NVMe drive on that. It's like that's yeah, something to play with. <laughs> no, I I I bought. Um, it wasn't the slowest NVMe drive <laughs> possible, but it comes very close. It's an integral 128 gig. Uh, it does slightly higher than SATA speeds. Not that much, but slightly higher. It's like 700 megabytes per second ish. And yeah, no, it. Boots significantly faster. I hit the power button and it's like, pfft, oh, okay. <laughs> also, I want to throw a little bit of knowledge out there. I saw people like, oh no, do I have to buy a new uh, PCI Express 4.0 motherboard to take advantage of these? Because now when videos got it, mm -hmm. <laughs> no video card right now is like utilizing <laughs> more than like what 3% of 3.0 throughput. The only thing that is going to remark remotely touch PCIe 4 storage yeah as it not your video <laughs> cards the, there was one video card it was the RX 5600 which AMD screwed up and instead of giving it a full by 16 uh, bus wipe they only gave it a by 8 so if you put it in a PCIe 3 slot by eight is significantly slower than the PCIe 4 by eight. That was the only case, but that was AMD's fault because they done goofed. <laughs> well, I have a quadro in a by four slot. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I do not know if it <laughs> sends video. You're probably not gaming on it. There's not a whole lot of throughput from the PCIe. I don't, it just I, goes I, to memory and then the GPU does it in there. <laughs> it's a big shrug emoji. I, I'm guessing it can probably do text. I just it's in Jackbox because that motherboard requires a uh, video card to boot. Period. There's no way yeah. around it. And uh, it's like I needed the by 16 slot for the uh, fiber card. Yeah. Because yeah, you're not doing 10 gig <laughs> on by four mm -hmm. PCIe. Wait. <laughs> You, you can do like yeah. nine, or eight point two to nine on a good day ish, but that's really driving it and crossing your fingers. <laughs> I mean, a by eight you get around uh, eight gigabits per second. So, mm. and a by sixteen you get sixteen gigabits. So, <laughs> but Jill's getting ready to build a new computer. No, she's going to buy one. She's going to buy one of those Atari computers. <laughs> All the lovely, lovely wood finish. <laughs> that, that's the best part of a computer, man, is the wood finish. <laughs> yeah, Steve just found out about this. <laughs> no, he's, me and him have been talking about it. I told you. I, we've talked about it. You hear that, Steve? You have. <laughs> So I don't want to hear anything otherwise. Boo love, tell Ben that I've talked about getting a new machine, a new workstation, <laughs> and uh, um, trying to decide between a System 76. <laughs> you don't admit to that on the internet, Steve. Come you on. don't. Right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> XMPP. <laughs> oh, XMPP. That is that still a thing? I thought Google depreciated. Uh, 
I'm sure they're not actively supporting it anymore, but it is kind of an open protocol, so... <laughs> Who's still using it? That's a very good question. Uh, the actual Jitsi Java desktop client uses XMPP. <laughs> so what are you going to get, Joe? Are you going to get Intel or AMD? No, it'll be a, a Ryzen system. Ryzen? Yeah. Go for <laughs> Steve's yeah, already yeah, I, uh, <laughs> put the kibosh on the, uh, no. on the thelia. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, has actually, because he knows how much cheaper I can build one for. No, I, I'm seriously thinking uh, my brother has a 2080. Um, I've been, I'm thinking of a don't, uh, don't, NVIDIA GPU. Don't, don't break GPU. into your brother's house and steal his GPU. There's nothing to help you. <laughs> Yeah, my brother uh, just spent a lot of money last year on a new system. <laughs> what did Jordan end up getting? Uh, the 3900X. 3900X. 12 core, 24 thread. Okay. Yeah, I saw the 3950 and it just seems like you might as well go thread booper. If you're going to spend the money on a 3950. <laughs> well, it's the difference between spending $700 or $1,500. $1, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> than buying like a reasonably like, mid-range, uh, good mid-range motherboard for $200 or $600. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I, I Most of my other systems are workstations. <laughs> so they're just older now. God, I spent five hundred dollars on my first Pentium Pro motherboard uh, back in the nineties. Uh, the it was insane. Point. Going with Threadrip right now, you really got to have like your biggest op biggest obstacle is like, yeah, I need PCI lanes. Yeah, I know you've been dealing with that. <laughs> that um, outside of that, man, like even for everything I'm doing mm -hmm. here, if I would have went Jordan's route. Yeah, I, I'm. I was just thinking of a 3900x probably as well, or 3950. And if all you're doing is gaming, the 3300x, if you can find it, or the 3600 are your best options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which um, I'm waiting for either the 3600 to drop below uh, 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. Which it hasn't yet. Uh, or the 3300X shows up in stock anywhere. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> so I can um, put that into the Steam box and uh, relieve the 2400G for something smaller. <laughs> and remember, kids, yeah. there's nothing wrong with like, I just want one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the whole Steam box is basically an, I just want one of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's it. I, I, I try to save people so much time because you see the warm up for the mental gymnastics sometimes. Like, but this and this and that. Like, what's wrong with just like some. I just buy stuff sometimes. Like, I want one, man. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Steven just bought a, a cute little disc sander. Of course, he's using that at work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but that's the smallest one you can get. Where was it from, honey? It's all metal. It's it's Lithuania, I think. Something like that. German built. Okay. Luxembourg. That's it. It's made in Luxembourg. There. <laughs> that, that, that's a baby first-gen Threadripper under full load doing all this. Yeah, no, that's... Uh... <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's what three threads at twenty percent? Uh, no, but you one see, thread at twenty percent. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro, I need a twenty nine fifty X. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna go for that, why not max it out twenty nine ninety W X? I would take one. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm guessing the Valley on those hasn't dropped all not, that much. Not at all. None. <laughs> not even a little bit. Those things cost as much as new Gen 3 Threadrippers. Yeah. <laughs> Variable speed, high torque, won't melt, siren. All right. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that was one of the things while I was working, um, you know, cutting the holes out of the uh, the Xbox shell. That's some crap plastic and the uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the Dremel. <laughs> well, it's the cheap Dremel. It doesn't have any kind of variable torque. It's got an on is, button. Did it catch on fire? Yeah, basically. Pedro? <laughs> it didn't catch on fire, but it melted the plastic. It's like, okay, so we're not cutting, we're just melting. All right. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I have insufficient tools like that, and you know what I do, Pedro? Hmm? I fill up the tub with water and do it under that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was my first time using a trouble. I, I did not know any better, so. <laughs> yeah, dealing with polystyrene is no fun. I don't envy anybody has to tango, like, trying to do anything other than that is use it as a packing material. <laughs> and to flip my straw over, I discovered it had a hole. <laughs> <laughs> I would have questions if my straw had a hole in it. <laughs> oh, these are the cheap plastic ones you can buy in the store, and they we've had them for like five years, and finally getting getting some use out of them. <laughs> I remember, um, I think my mom bought exactly one pack of those plastic straws. It was like 200 of them. Yeah. Last for years, huh? <laughs> 20 years. <Yeah>. Easily. <laughs> Man, I bet those things were leaching Yay, some tasty stuff after a while. <laughs> they were in a drawer. That they didn't really catch any sunlight light, unless yeah. you opened the drawer. <laughs> that, that was it. So, yeah, no, they, they lasted a long time. <laughs> Yeah, these are 10-year-old straws. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to grab something to drink, and I think we're going to do a okay. show. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to get a high-end gaming system as opposed to doing full workstation. I already have equipment, <laughs> so... Yeah, high-end gaming right now was looking very nice. If you don't mind spending $500 on the up-and-coming 3070. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, no, that's, um... I'd still wait till, like, the end of October. Because that that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Depending on what happens. That's, I that's mean, if it keeps game, going the way yeah. it's going... I'm just going to keep the 1080. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, by the time AMD has put out everything <laughs> and NVIDIA has put out everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True story, Linux Ganeru. Yes, they have to have holes. <laughs> but some of them have holes in the wrong places. And that's where it becomes a problem. <laughs> ah, and I see you you're Foot in pedal. live. Yep. <laughs> we Foot get a Linux control the speed. <laughs> I remember um, when I put the 1650 in the C box and I turned it on those first few times it's like oh god what's on fire what's melting and oh, I, take it I out, know. Like, Nothing. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> My RX 580 d did that, and it, it scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> did you get that burnt? Even Steve smelled it. He's like, what's that smell coming? And I'm like, oh, shoot, I hope something isn't overheating. And I checked my temps. They were just fine. No, nah, it was just the card breaking in. 
Yeah, yeah, so no, it, uh, it it's took a, a good few runs uh, of running it and actually playing <laughs> games and letting it do the initial burn ins. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. We're done with that now. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time I've had in a long time with a GPU. Um, so, but apparently it's pretty common sometimes with the Radeons. <laughs> And Zotac video cards, apparently. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, those two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what system do you currently have? Do you still have the same uh, Turbo Pink one? You put together last year? Yes. Yeah. Or year before? Still using that one, I don't yeah. Remember. <laughs> yeah, it was last year. The beginning of last, last year. year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still still the old uh fifth gen Core I seven and but I've got thirty two megs of RAM in it and um the five eighty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time for an upgrade. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a whole new generation of graphics cards out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this time I'm gonna... I do want a 5700 um, X. I am thinking of also building another um, mini ITX system. But I have the same case that you have, have for Nori, but it's the, mm -hmm. the green version. So I was thinking oh, right. of repla okay, yeah, replacing... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought that when they were new, like 10 years ago. So I want to upgrade that system and put a Ryzen. Yeah, no, I bought that one for Ryzen. It. It's like, oh, it's it's 50 pounds, is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was, and they're great little, it, little uh, yeah, cases. It was a, mm -hmm. a space consideration, considering that she has the, uh, like, Ikea oh, yeah, like, the tiltable bench. desk feet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so there's a little shelf on each of the feet, so I gotta find something that'll fit there. It's like, oh. There we go. <laughs> the Raijin mm -hmm. Tech Mepis Plus. <laughs> yeah, Mepis. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the case that uh, Nori's computer is in. <laughs> Mini ITX. Yeah, Steve has been Which loves will it. <laughs> It will actually fit a full-size graphics card in. You just have to have an SFX power supply to uh, give it some clearance so that the graphics card can do, oh, go yeah. above the cables. <laughs> I think I, I bought a small... I, I need to get a new power supply for it, but I sm bought a small EVGA, one of their small 500-watt uh, power supplies, but I want to put something bigger in there. So that one you got would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, that you're paying through the nose, especially right now, because buying power supplies right now is not a Nasty. good idea. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> buy a thousand more power supply and be done with it. <laughs> yeah. I bought that 750 hey, watt in Portugal six years ago. <laughs> That's a keeper. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> it's only 80 plus bronze, but at the time, it's like, oh, 70 euros for a 750 watt power supply. Yes, please. Give me. <laughs> when I was sticking the system together, I went through the, like, oh, load, we're going to do that video. You know what? Just buy a thousand watt. Just F it. Yeah, you, you have the <laughs> workstations. I have a 2000 watt in, in one of them. <laughs> Like from the wall, I think the most I'm going to be pulling from this box is maybe 700. Mm. According to the PC part picker calculator, with everything <laughs> running at its max power draw, 400 watts. 400. <laughs> For the current system. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Plenty then. <laughs> yeah. I wanted some headroom in this, but I also built this to have two video cards in it. Rendering. Yes. Yeah. PC card pickler. Pickler. Yes. <laughs> Picker. Pickler. <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> All right. You just dunk it in some um, some vinegar. <laughs> Leave it there for three years. There's pickled. <laughs> well, you got to put the pickling agent in it. 
Oh, there's a pickling gauge. I don't know enough about yeah. pickles. <laughs> uh, I didn't know for the longest time, but yeah, that's what makes the pickle taste like pickle. That's why when you have like a pickled okra or something like that, that okra was the reason I was like, this tastes like dill pickles. I'm like, yeah, it's got the uh, pickling gauge. Yeah. Oh, that's where that taste comes from. All right. I'll keep yeah. away from that okay. stuff. <laughs> I love dill pickles. <laughs> So let's pull that down. Hey, everyone, we're going to do a show. Yes. Let's get that. Yeah, now if AMD fails and NVIDIA doesn't drop the prices, I'm going to keep the 1080 for another oh, generation. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great card. AMD's not going to fail, but set expectations accordingly, man. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever they're going to release is probably going to be a little bit faster than a 2080 Ti and a little bit cheaper than a 3070. So mm -hmm. that'll be good. Then again, who knows? Maybe AMD is going to come out and um, yeah, pull a Ryzen. I might be surprised. They've been getting closer and closer. So this, this generation will probably be even closer to the 30 series. Probably more like the 20 series, but <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just needed something better than the 5700 XT. <laughs> I don't know, man. I've heard that's the best card in the universe lately. <laughs> You've been listening to Strider. Yeah, Stop it. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> D don't judge where I get my news from. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buckle up. Let's do this. Boom. That's locked. Yes. That's locked. Coming into it in three, two, one. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, possibly explore some of the stranger things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and everything else that catches our interest. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro mm -hmm. Mateus and everyone live. Joining us. Yay. Listen to, listening to us after the fact. What's new, everyone? It's been a full week. The world's changed. Ever so slightly <laughs> yes. since we were last together. Um, the reviews for the NVIDIA 3080s are out. And lo and yeah. behold, yeah. <laughs> shock, um, shock Pikachu, they're faster than the old ones. Yay. I think everyone's equally amazed. No one saw that coming. And, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> Although, to be fair, like generational jump between the 2000, like... The 1000 to 2000 series, everyone was a bit meh. But with this one, everyone's going, oh my God, so fast. All right. Yeah, being able to game on 4K <laughs> at ultra high settings. Oh. <laughs> I think you need to be careful at night, especially if you have a 10 series card, or you might be visited by the leather jacket fairy that will hover over you. It's like, buy a 30 series. <laughs> Yeah. Really and this is how I know Nori is not listening. Otherwise, there would be a leather jacket flying at my head right about now. She's got to fill up with the bricks first. Um, so once new, we get a uh, quite a sizable show to cut through. I do want to give a quick mention. I've almost got this completely hammered out into a usable state. If you're watching us live on Twitch, uh, we have closed captioning enabled. I thought that would be something helpful, you know, and it's mm -hmm. reasonably accurate. I'm not going to say it's perfect by any stretch of the imagination. We're using the uh, Google API and some trickery behind that to do it in real time. So you can watch it like, I don't know what they said. And it flips out, which is the hilarious part. But yep. um, it is there. Also, I've spent the last week uh, using Linux to resurrect a classic Apogee duet. <laughs> Apogee. <laughs> <laughs> I made it all the way through a new episode of Interfacing Linux that's uh, your patron. It's currently in Discord in the announcements tab. If you want to take a look at the video, it'll be posted on Patreon uh, after this afternoon when I get done uploading the shows and all that. But yeah, it's the Apogee Duet from 2007. I wanted to see if it's still usable in 2020. So if you want to go check that out, that'd be cool, man. What's new with you, Jill? Oh, boy. I've actually done a lot despite having a sore throat from all our fires here in, in Cali. I've been keeping the air conditioner on with the filter filtration system, so that does help. But, yeah, it, it, it's been an issue. <laughs> and despite that, I was on Big Daddy Linux Live again, the European edition of one of our favorite online lugs. 
And um, I'm actually I'm going to be featured on a Linux podcast that will be released soon. So I'll tell you all about that when that comes out. I'm excited about it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, over here, I uh, basically spent my free time this week clearing out my drawers. Feel free to take that out of context. I love to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, uh, I did the Ikea thing and I have like a, an Alex set of drawers right here. And uh, I have a couple of more Ikea drawers under the TV. TV. Um, and yeah, no, just getting rid of boxes and just general crap that built up uh over the years but i did keep at least one of each cables that may be necessary at some point including dvi vga a dvi to vga adapter and i found two um ps2 to usb adapters okay. one with a male ps2 and one with a male usb so both ends covered um it's uh yeah no it's um uh, I didn't find anything that I'd forgot I had because I knew I had all that stuff there somewhere. I just know where it is now. <laughs> In the pre-show we were talking about, <laughs> you gave it a mention. The um, You kept the VGA cable, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I had two VGA cables and I tossed one and I Aww. kept the the chunkiest one, like the the one with the widest cables. Like, yeah, you stay. <laughs> Did you keep the um, ultra-wide SCSI to external connector? <laughs> don't have one of those. I don't think I ever had one of those. <laughs> Ladies oh and boy, gentlemen, I've got I might be them. projecting because I still don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right into it, though, because while not necessarily uh, Linux related, everyone's talking will, about it, so we yeah. need to give it a mention. Yeah, it will impact Linux, though. So this is huge, huge news. NVIDIA to acquire ARM for 40 billion dollars in September 2021. And uh, that's apparently when the SoftBank, SoftBank merger is supposed to happen as well. So right after that, then NVIDIA is going to take over. And, you know, it makes sense because the ARM chips are very inexpensive and heat efficient, and they're used in all our cell phones and IoT by companies like Apple, Samsung, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation, of course. And they're perfect for NVIDIA's expansion into AI. And that's the real reason why they want these chips. And they say they're going to keep ARM open, keep their open licensing model, which is this is wonderful, because if they don't, I see risk five, and it's open architecture kind of taken over. But I think NVIDIA will will do what they say <laughs> so this, you know this is a good uh, thing. I, I can sort of see nvidia <laughs> just doing this it's like i mean we kind of want them for other reasons but it's also nice to give apple the middle finger uh so yeah yes <laughs> uh, very true but yeah no it, it's i know that they're doing this for like the enterprise side the ai side the deep learning stuff and the energy efficiency stuff because it's harm um but you know, as a user, uh, some like an end user, I do very much want a new Shield tablet. <laughs> it, it, those were really nice. It's like, oh, two hundred dollars yeah. for like the best price performance ratio on an Android tablet. Yeah, give me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm looking at it, man. It, you know, Nvidia has every incentive to basically allow ARM to continue being ARM. Even Nvidia went so far as to say, hey, this. this we're not going to mess with anything. Of course, you know, initially, embrace, yeah. right? Yeah, we, we, don't any, we don't want to upset anyone in, in, until we got it. But, you know, I'm not necessarily worried. If you know about ARM, it's you have ARM IP in some device. ARM doesn't make anything. ARM license their IP and they end up in mobile processors and everything you can imagine. But I saw some people wondering, like, well, what, what about Apple? What are they going to do? Here's the thing, though. Something <laughs> you can get from ARM is uh, a perpetual license. So it's yours. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. NVIDIA can't come in and go, that's ours now. You can't you know, stop mm -hmm. building an Apple. But yeah, that's the thing, man. Um, you know, that applies to the manufacturing rights with a perpetual license. So I don't think there's anything to worry about. Uh, it's interesting. I think 
it'll just stop if Apple decides to try and renegotiate that contract at some point in the future because well, they want to do something. <laughs> it's kind of the thing, though. Apple definitely has a perpetual license. There's nothing to renegotiate. Yeah, so, in that case, then, yeah, probably won't affect them at all. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, NVIDIA buying Mellanox, which, like, curious, and now they're getting hold of ARM. You have my attention. I, I want to see where it's going to go. They're yeah. going to become one of those big enterprise companies. Mm. Big. Can, we, can we still <laughs> argue about uh, GPUs, though? I'm sure we can. Okay, okay. Well, I'm just making sure. I don't think AMD is going anywhere anytime right. soon. Not with Ryzen. But um, no, uh, actually, neither is Debian. Uh, the project leader, Jonathan Carter, uh, explains problems facing this key Linux distro, or so says uh, the register. And, well, it is, there was a, a Debian talk at DebConf 20. Uh, you probably remember Def, uh, DebConf, what was it, 2013, 2014? The one that uh, Linus Torvalds got in trouble? Mm -hmm. and for, <laughs> for some reason, that Never resurfaced. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that resurfaced recently, but uh, yeah. So uh, one of the things that they were addressing were the problems, and they say it's like Debian is basically a bottomless pit of problems. They have plenty of volunteers. There's like 900 and something volunteers uh De actively developing and another 220 something um uh, maintaining packages and whatnot and it's like we need more help because well the repos are huge basically and there's um what was it 61,000 amd 64 binary packages in the bullseye repos so yeah maybe like 1100 or 1200 people is probably not cutting it and I was with them right up until the point it's like, oh, um, Debianites uh, don't like spending money. They feel guilty. It's like, do you know why you feel guilty? Because you have 1,200 people working for you and you're not paying them. What? And with a massive economic recession on the horizon, there's a lot of developers out there actively looking for a job, for a, you know, a means to get foot on the mm -hmm. table by the end of the month. I was unemployed for a year. That's part of the reason why I move to the uk it's complete desperation it's like i gotta do something i gotta find a job i have to find a way to eat this month and well this is what happened so if you are looking for help maybe start looking at spending some of that money that you're saying that you have a healthy finance right now and you have sponsors uh that have said that they will help you pay people so what I'm taking away from this is Debian should move to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> that was an allegory. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, they could really improve their outreach at Linux conferences. Um, uh, for one, they, they always have a really great booth at scale, but it would be nice if they had mini conferences like, like Ubuntu does with UbuCon. That would help a lot. And also with, um, getting more diversity because we we're, we have greater diversity now at the IRL conferences. But of course, right now in today's world of COVID, um, things have changed. So everything's virtual, but eventually we'll be back to, <laughs> to IRL conferences. <laughs> And um, that should help them a lot. <laughs> I, I like that optimism. I don't share it, but I like it. Um, Someone's got to be optimistic at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to well, have to say, in like the immediate future, you know, things like DevComp, Minicomp, Dev Minicomp, all that, all, all the IRL stuff is blown away. And the reason I sit back and just look at it, like with no investment as to any of that coming back, because you're seeing companies and conference organizers doing the virtual stuff going, this is a lot cheaper. We can save a lot of money doing it this way. And that's why I think that's pretty much going to be in our future. But to speak to having cash reserves, you got to think back to like a famine mentality. You're thinking like, oh, I need to prepare for tomorrow, which I, I understand those feels, Debian. But to Pedro's point, yeah, okay. There's a couple things we got to unpack. One is there is something to be said to the point of 
we don't want to hire anyone temporarily because they're going to have somebody working on a project and then that person's going to leave. Then we're going to have to find somebody to maintain it. So the solution to that is to hire some full-time people. Okay. I think that that's easy to fix. Um, am I a crazy talk yet? No, that is exactly what I was hinting mm-hmm. at. Yeah. yeah, I think so, it's very good. If you take care of that and prepare for a rainy day, I understand that. But at, to a point, if you have sustained funding, yes, I mean, that that's something you have to evolve into. And then it's going to be more of a hassle going from, you know, keeping it as, hey, this is a community project and we don't have to deal with all this other nasty stuff. It's going to be in your future at some point, man. I know it sucks. Especially but. if you want to grow beyond the point that you are now, because if you're going to keep having these many packages in the repos and providing what is effectively the base distro for Ubuntu, for tons of other derivatives of Ubuntu and Debian derivatives, Linux Mint, um, it, yeah, you're gonna have to. Either that or just move to the UK. <laughs> Canonical's already here. I, I don't yeah. think they gel. <laughs> they are. It's, I'm going to give them full noodles and make them fight it out. <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. Debian, your fantastic project. I use you we on everything you. in the studio. Uh, keep being <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yep. Speaking of Ubuntu, though, man. Yeah, speaking of Ubuntu and and uh, you know Debian could uh, also hire a community manager as well, <laughs> like this next story. So uh, Mark Shuttleworth said he dropped the ball and is bringing back the Ubuntu Community Council after it shrank to one member, which was himself <laughs> for a while. And you know this is great to hear, especially since the Community Council really serves as the bridge between Ubuntu and the community. And, you know, they um, help support Ubuntu governance, governments, as well as, you know, conflicts in, in the, between the community and um, the company. So this, this position has been needed for a while. And um, Alan Pope at one time was the Ubuntu community manager way back in uh, 2016. <laughs> yeah, 2014 to 2016. And Jono Bacon was uh, the community manager mm-hmm. before him. So, yeah, I think I, I really, a, a lot of people have complained that there isn't a good go between, between the community and the, and, uh, the company. So, yeah, I, th- I think there really needs to be a, a community manager and it would help uh, ease uh, Shuttleworth's position as well and help him to be able to focus on what he needs to focus on as CEO. <laughs> Reading through Shuttleworth's extensive post, all this would be in our show notes if you're looking for links. Uh, one thing he mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, to quote him, he's like, I watched how the CC members stopped coming to meetings, stopped organizing their meetings, and stopped driving activity. So this doesn't seem like uh, anything malicious or anything to that. It seems like it fizzled out. Yeah. Yeah. Which will happen. I mean, if you have such a long running project like Ubuntu, yeah, that that will inevitably happen. Though uh, <laughs> one of the replies uh, by one of the participants was said, uh, pointed out a couple of problems that uh, people in the community have expressed, which then the development team has done nothing with and they sort of attributed that to the fact that uh, there is no community council and it was Mm -hmm. uh, the gnome shell is not really a desktop for enterprise users with 10 to 20 years of formed habits (laughs) and the snap subsystem is excessive resource hungry and ineffective for both desktop and server markets (laughs) yes I like this participant. I like this that participant. Like yeah. Somebody yeah. Coming Chamber out and saying, I'm, I took a break from yelling at a cloud. And he's like, get off my lawn. I don't like change. Change is bad. Here's here's my thought. How about we get an Ubuntu community spin? You know, well, we could do our own here at LGC. It sounds a little bit sideways, but it works for Susie. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Uh, although you could make the argument that that's kind of Linux Mint at this point. I could make a lot of Especially yeah. with the whole blocking snaps. Sense. <laughs> Shut up, Pedro. Snaps are confusing. <laughs> Using Cinnamon instead of Gnome 3 and blocking snaps. It's like, eh, no, that, 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 that's Linux Mint. <laughs> gnome. Pasha. Let's talk about the yeah. best, the ultimate desktop manager available ah. for Linux. It's XFCE. 
This is from 9 to 5 Linux. I'm talking about 416. First look at some of the new features and improvements. Speedy like a mouse. Always happy to see that hanging out in the background. A couple of new things with this. Um, there are going to be some new icons. It's going to be added to all the core components and extend XFCE's visual identity because that's what I'm... And just don't mess with the high contrast themes and icons and we'll be fine. They're going to revamp and improve the About XFC dialogue. Hopefully as little work went into that as possible. Um, auto hide animations. Okay, <laughs> that's there. As long as that's something I can disable since I have a very strict no wishy nonsense policy on my desktop. Fractional scaling. That's good. Happy to mm -hmm. see that. Something I did yes. see that was kind of neat that I've run into because I move 100 plus gigabyte files around in the studio. Being able to uh, pause file transfers. It's like, huh. So copy it and paste. You can just pause it for a second. Maybe you got to do something, something else. And boom. Free that up dark mode for the XFC panel. That's nice to see. Uh, what else do we have? Alt tab dialog. You can set that to only be on your primary monitor. That is how it works in 4.12, but maybe that's an issue somewhere else. And something the community, for some reason, has an issue with, client-side decorations. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, one of the things they inherited from <laughs> GNOME 3. Um, okay, Pedro, the... why should I hate client-side deck? I, I don't have you anything that... You know those that... chunky title bars that GNOME 3 has? Yes. The ones that take an un unnecessary amount of space when they could just be a very thin title bar with, you know, the buttons and the title of the window. But isn't that a feature? Uh, I'm sure the GNOME Foundation would like to have people believe that it is a feature. Okay. No one else seems to agree, though. <laughs> it, you can change that, though, right? Uh, don't know. I, I'm not a big XFC uh thing but the, the the thing i did see okay, that i hang didn't on. like so it's gtk3 right yeah yeah i can disable client side decorations in gtk3 okay <laughs> that has nothing to do with xfc that's i had again that, I, my apologies <laughs> i thought pedro could provide me an answer <laughs> well i like that there's a new nightlight feature um and it's in the power manager which all the modern desktop managers do have and like ven was saying the fractional scaling it's wonderful because not only is it pre uh, predefined like 1x 1.5 and 2x you can customize the size as well and that's in the display dialog so that's pretty huge that was a, a huge new feature we were all looking forward to Yay. <laughs> I'm going to be on 412 for a while. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until this I gets did like settled. the new icons. <laughs> the, the flutter icons, instead of they finally moved away from the attempt at providing depth to desktop icons. No, it's just an icon. Just make it flat and clear what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Long as... Uh, with, with XFC, for me, it's always been... It's very functional. Don't care what it looks like. It's like the, you know, I, I don't want to see a lot of focus on like animations and just <laughs> unnecessary stuff. I, I don't need anything between minimizing a window and that window not being there. <laughs> Yeah, in true Rodentia, Rodentia window manager uh, style. <laughs> Keep it simple. It works. It works. Hey, yes. I, I, need to, I need to have 20 virtual terminals open and no hope of ever organizing. And yeah. then, I'm, then I'm fine. I'm like, all right, it's good. <laughs> K-Disc Mark. Yes, and a big yeah. thank you to Arthur and for uh, submitting this story, which you can do if you're a Patreon. More on that uh, in a bit. But yeah, this is KDisk Mark, and if you've looked at an SSD review lately, you've probably seen Crystal Disk Mark, uh, the little screenshots with the uh, green progress bars that give you like write and read speeds uh, for the different types of uh, reads and writes that you can do. And well, this is very much attempting, uh, KDisk Mark is very much attempting to be the open source alternative to that. There's just a problem that I found because it's like, oh, that looks really neat. I'm a download it, run it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. Where's my raid? It doesn't see MD mm. raids. 
Hmm. Why? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you pulling this information from? It doesn't see the raid. It doesn't see the two SSDs that constitute the raid. Eh? <laughs> Pedro, this is, this is a GUI utility. This is designed for people who want to look at little bars and graphs. <laughs> but it could be a very useful GUI. But it's, it's missing functionality. Maybe it should move to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know he's not already in the UK? <laughs> well, it is still a work in progress. And, you know, I usually use DD or Sysbench. That's what I've, I've used for years to uh, do benchmarking on my disks. But it, it's nice to have a really simple uh, GUI for this because there's very few of those on Linux. So that's really cool. <laughs> it is. And if you're just looking for something real quick and some numbers pop on your screen, you're like, hey, look, bars. Hey. Uh, I quit caring about disk speed the second I got my first Intel SSD. SSD, yes. <laughs> like, yes. That's fast enough. I'm good. Now I have NVMe drives. And yeah, I, I, I don't have any complaints. <laughs> None. Um, so, yeah. Let's talk about something I'm, I am using right here. You can kind of see it. That little bit of the screen right there. That is Ador, and there's a new version out, 6.3. It is currently available. This is a maintenance release. Okay, I'm more on that in a second. Uh, the big news with this release, if you do any type of music, it has a built-in LUF calculator, which is your overall loudness calculation. It has the uh, conformity analysis meter, so things like Spotify, Amazon Music, Deezer, YouTube, Spotify Loud, which is another option if you're paying subscriber. Um, new mappings for a couple of brand new control surfaces, stability updates to the WebSocket in, which is something they've been working on. You know, instead of having a um, like physical control surface, like these are just MIDI devices. You could take a, over the web, use something like a tablet, multiple tablets to emulate this type of functionality which I think is really neat. Uh, I tried it out. I downloaded it. It's available. Um, you can build it from source for free, but I get the prepackaged ones because I kick them a little coin every month. And um, opened it up, launched, imported one of the uh, 5X series. That's what we're currently running. Uh, show sessions. And opened up, uh, what was it? The delay plugin just happened to double click. I'm like, well, did they change anything? And this is like the built-in Adore, like from the Adore team. Immediately, Spite crashed. And <laughs> that was the last I saw of the Adore 6.3 because I can't have that at all. Um, mm. I'm going to say for like live mixing, if stability is mission critical for you, I'm sure you already know this. 6X, there be dragons um, that are just not there with 5. And 6 is a little more... Uh, resource intensive compared to five so also mm -hmm. i can't disable um plug in delay compensation from launching and i was told because reasons uh so i can't really use it yet that's the thing uh go play with it uh if you're wondering if you want to make some mad tracks pedro don't you want to make some mad tracks <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> I did toy around with music making applications uh, a long, long time ago. Uh, even helped uh, <laughs> someone in university like get the basics of that old software that I had used because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. And he said, oh, I get it. And then he went off to do his thing. So mm. he hasn't it's become massively program. popular that I'm aware of. So. <laughs> I use it as a digital mixer. I use it as multi-track recorder. If you're looking to make some like um, spicy beat boop music, check out Q Tractor. They just had a monthly release. Mm -hmm. That's also good to play with. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, make some cool stuff, man. So uh, yeah, okay. We're just going to keep the audio train rolling. Yep. <laughs> this one is uh, also control. And well, if you've been listening to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays or Linux Gamecast Weekly for a while, chances are you know about Pavu Control. Uh, that's the first thing Ven says to anyone he meets. It's like, install Pavu Control. Uh, it's not exactly. a, I'm only slightly it exaggerating really on that. my podiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only slightly exaggerating, but uh, yeah, this is also control. Uh, if you're looking at the screenshots, it's like, oh, that, that looks a lot like Pavu control. 
Yes, it does. <laughs> that is exactly the point here. And well, if you are determined to keep anything that Leonard Pottering has ever created off of your system, be it System D, Pulse Audio, uh, whatever uh, System D Home D comes out, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, this is uh, very much what you're looking for because it gives you similar functionality to Pavu Control. Uh, Jack apparently uh, can also interface with it, but there are dragons here too. Uh, specifically, the two examples that the developer points out, it was Terraria and Firefox not playing any audio if they don't see Pulse Audio. Well, it's uh, it's not just those two, especially when it comes to games. Uh, any kind of native game that doesn't use SDL2 or even basic SDL uh, 1.2, that like recent games, that's probably not going to work. Proton, yeah, that uses SDL2 because F audio, uh, so you're probably okay with that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is really cool because it's it's basically it's Pavu control, but for Elsa, which is really nice. And there is, like, since I collect uh, vintage and old systems, that's that's very helpful for, for some of the old computers because uh, Sometimes Pulse Audio acts up on those old machines because it's a little more resource heavy. So <laughs> I can see this being very good for those. <laughs> this is pretty neat. Uh, no pulse, no problem. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, everything is using also. Everything sits on top of also because also yeah. sits in the kernel. And um, that is the advanced Linux uh, sound architecture. And this will just let you tango with it one on one. And I will say, I don't. I, <laughs> I don't even like messing with also and setting up like device profiles because I also, the second you start doing that, you understand why Pulse Audio came out, you know, <laughs> littered, good on you because yeah. you can tango with Pulse. <laughs> it, it's like you're dealing with machine level stuff. When, like what? This does this is not human readable. I mean, it is, but barely. So I'm <laughs> glad to see something like that. Now. Yay. Something I brought up on multiple occasions is keyboards. I like keyboards. Um, I like a keyboard's quiet. And I like them wireless. And most importantly, mm -hmm. I like them split because my hands aren't going to be like arthritis. They've got enough arthritis in them right now. Um, but by the time I get to the home, I still want to be able to tippity tap. So I'm always on the lookout for something that is not a giant rectangle and loud, which, you know, I, I understand the kids <laughs> are like, oh man, so good. Let's talk about key CB, man. It's a split keyboard. It's two PCBs and it's effectively an SMD controller and it's running rust because why not? 2020, man. <laughs> Check it out. It's only a keyboard, no LED, no display. Let's stop that. Let's get some pictures. Um, nothing more than keys and USB. I'm down with that, man. Uh, no blink. Yay. Speaking of rust, uh, looking at that, that would probably survive ex precisely one T mishap. What do you think, Pedro? I don't <laughs> think it would even survive the one, but you'd probably not like that one as pictured because those are blue switches. Exactly. Those are the clicky ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the mechanical keyboard you don't want, Ben. <laughs> that's the really loud clicky one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you can't replace the keys on this? Oh, no, you can. Um, oh, so it was they, a stump point to bring up. Got it. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm just giving you a fact, hard he, time. He yeah. brings well, it up, says, uh, yeah, he brings Cherry up MX. two kinds of mechanical switches. <laughs> yeah, Cherry MX and the, the Kill Chalk Low Profile Blue Switches. Yeah. Well, my joke spoiled, but um, yeah, there's the thing. <laughs> you can get it for 60 euro. <laughs> well, you, you can get the stuff for 60 euros. Pedro, I have faith. You gotta you put can it together stick yourself. This together. Yeah, you get a little TRS <laughs> cable. The only thing I don't like about it is it's not wireless. I, I don't mm. want to live like some primitive with the <laughs> cords on my desk. How hard would it be to add a Bluetooth module? <laughs> Who would use Bluetooth? Ooh. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's already using Rust. You're probably not going to tell the extra latency. <laughs> but... <laughs> I can hear the click before it shows up on the screen. It's not right, Pedro. Yes. I can't live with that. <laughs> Now, Finn, you could probably, you know, modify it and get get uh, red or brown switches. That'll that'll also be a little quieter. But this is cool. I think this is a cool project. I think it's a nice project, and you can absolutely swap it out for something that doesn't click at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could go for the, That's the, whole the point Cherry MX Silent. They they make yes. those. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> want to buy individual key? Why the whole thing? I, I love the idea. I, I just love it. I'll, I'll just replace the one switch with a, a really loud blue one and yeah. a sea of quiets. Just make the one really loud one. It's like, click. There you go. I don't know how I feel about the necessity of having a TRS cable, a big chunk it, but I understand it's like the aesthetics thing, but I don't know. If, yeah. if you think that's bizarre and a little bit sideways, go to the Reddits and visit our mechanical keyboards that rabbit hole doesn't have mm -hmm. a bottom <laughs> if you truly think that you're like oh man i have some weird hobbies nah they got you beat. they got you beat. yeah d don't go on reddit at all if you think that you'll have your all of your dreams just Reddit's, Reddit's a beautiful, fantastic place. You just have to pick and choose. And, you know, if you walk into like some of the dumb parts of Reddit, like any other site, like Twitter, if you follow a bunch of dumb people, like, how oh, it makes me so. It's like, quit following the stuff that makes you angry. But, but, and see, you just want to be angry. That's all it is. <laughs> we don't and like if to you be can angry. deal with that. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, if you would like to help us be non angry, uh, you can do that by joining us, uh, financing what we do. Kick us a buck a week. We would very much appreciate it. You can do that at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That is our sole source of funding. Now, I have to say that because if I brought up that we had Amazon affiliate links, Amazon would be like, don't say anything about that, which I won't. And I'll leave it up to you to figure out uh, why they would not want us to say anything. But we do have uh, like eBay links and stuff like that. <laughs> PayPal, Bitcoin, all the fun metal stuff. Yay. I'm pretty sure we got Bitcoin. Um, yes. Yeah. It was there last time I checked, so <laughs> unless something happened. <laughs> or be super awesome. Uh, share the show. All that. That's great. Just show up. Come say hi. Um, yeah. That's it. That, that, that's our plug. Oh, I don't know. Buy yay, this mattress. <laughs> this is not a buy mattress. But buy One it. share merch. Yeah, buy it. <laughs> we have shirts. Yeah. Store.linuxgamecast.com. Shirts. Stickers line your um, very barren um, <laughs> Pine Book Pro with some LGC stickers. No, I, know exact, I know exactly where you're going to go. And do not test or do not test LGC apparel on laptops. It's inhumane. No. <laughs> and it most certainly will not fit. So, no. <laughs> depending on how many stickers you already have there. <laughs> And it depending on how big your laptop off. is. <laughs> I still want that. Uh, I think it's a 21 inch Dell top um, that Dell made. Yeah. <laughs> it made some big ones. Uh, it, it was, yeah. it was so comically size, yeah. big. My brain immediately went to, I want to take that to a coffee shop. I want that, uh, you know, that surface table that Microsoft made. Just oh, put that Linux big one. on yeah. it. It's like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, how, I wonder what happens when the touchscreen driver just dies on you. Like, right. <laughs> now, admittedly, the driver just died out of shame being on a Microsoft product, but we need to get into a slice of pie and all admit at some point in your life, you've owned that plate. Oh, a pepperoni pie. <laughs> Ew. My grandma gave but, me two of those. Yes. When yeah, I moved those in with plates Nora. are. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> the biggest mystery is finding the origin of these plates because it doesn't matter what country you're from or where you lived. You've had one of them. They exist. Yeah. Yes. Everyone <laughs> had some from that brand. Yes. It's one of those facts of the world that no one knows where it came from. It just is. Yeah. It's going to be our downfall. That's, civilization's going to be taken down. It's a sleeper yeah. plate. Humanity dies and those plates are still there. <laughs> oh God, they used to be manufactured here in SoCal. And, I, and I'm trying to remember the name. Uh, it has an M in it. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Let's talk about Penta Hub. What is it? Melanox. Melanox? No. 
Okay, so <laughs> that would have been an <laughs> interesting <laughs> shift. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, can you imagine that conversation? You walk in, it's like, hey guys, hey guys, stop, stop. The, Guess what? We're making no, 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 no more plates tomorrow. We're making fiber, fiber <laughs> cards. All right, oh. tomorrow's gonna be a little weird. <laughs> 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 anyway, so this is uh, Pentahub, Pentahub One, actually. And we had talked about the company Pentacore last fall on LWW number 195. And um, they contacted me on Twitter to let us know about their latest project, which is so, Pentahub hang on. So One. So if they sent you, sent you an email, was it a pentagram? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pentatweet. Uh, I thought Jordan was the only one who could deliver cancerous jokes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pedro, you, you're still in shock from it, so just take your time. Uh, take it <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is Pentahub One, which is their one-click app store for your Raspberry Pi, and this is really awesome because now you can easily and quickly install a NextCloud instance, Home Assistant, Wi-Fi router, um, Internet of Things, set-top box projects, and games instantaneously. And without all the configuration hassle and time needed to get these projects up and running, like say a weekend <laughs> project, now you can just e instantly click in the app store and um, get that project you want to work on on your Raspberry Pi. It's just so cool. And uh, they have lots of people submitting projects. And of course, it's still growing because it's still fairly new. So I am really, really looking forward to playing around with this. <laughs> Awesome. That's that. That's actually very nice. Um, <laughs> I was looking at setting up uh, the uh, the pie hole and actually using this three uh, A, um, but I looked up. It's like Open Media mm -hmm. Vault uh, pie hole. It's like, oh, it's literally one command. Okay, uh, so I guess I can <laughs> I can yeah. try Pat to hub on the uh, A plus now. <laughs> yeah. I, I have more faith in you than you do yourself. You will find an excuse not to by next week. <laughs> it's a pretty neat project, man. Uh, go check it mm -hmm. out. If, uh, if you were angered, confused by such moon commands as apt, this might be for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're yeah, not. Some, Maybe. Go. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes the projects require a little bit more than apt install. <laughs> you have to have to sometimes even compile certain projects. So this just if makes you got to compile easier. something on Raspberry Pi, then you need to learn about cross compiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. GCC has a lot of cross compiling packages. Oh Go God! Look at your package manager. Gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we want to know. What you cross compile at home, what you run on your pie at home, or maybe just what you do at home on Tuesdays after 4 p.m. Tell us about <laughs> it. Send us a message. Mm -hmm. Hop over to our web zone, LinuxTeamcast.com forward slash contact. There's no bell button to smash. Nay. It decided lack of bell buttons, but you can choose LWDW for Linux Weekly, Daily, Wednesday. Give us an email that resolves. We don't even necessarily need a correct one. Just make sure it's a real one. That's the wrong show. And uh, subject, maybe a name. <laughs> and ask a question. Give us a thought, a hint, allegation, maybe something better left unsaid, but we're going to say it anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hints, thoughts, allegations. We'll take all of those. And, uh, well, if they are teeny tiny little bits of feedback that we can fit at the end of this very show. You shall be featured right now. Yeah. That's it. No also, one decided to take us up on it. <laughs> not this week. We had some YouTube stuff, but it wasn't the quality that I wanted to bring in. So uh, if you want to drop a comment on a YouTube video, feel free. We'll get back to you. Um, but don't uh, don't keep your toes and pinkies crossed that it's going to make it to the show. It might, but there's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. But we got to get out of here. We've overstayed our welcome. So I'm going to kick on some music and roll some credits. Bleep boops. Yay. <laughs> Bleep boops. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Van and Pedro, once again. <laughs> and thank you, Joe. 
I mean, you've been doing this for how many episodes now? Oh my gosh. Seven. Uh, no. <laughs> it's been more than two and a half years now, so... So yeah, about 140-ish Yeah, I started episodes? about 110. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you do five more, you have to move to the UK. <laughs> I oh. like how my allegory just uh, landed. <laughs> yes, that was good. That's how you hold on to a joke through I an could entire go to the Raspberry Pi yeah. store by Pedro. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, we talked about it um, on Linux Gamecast Weekly what? a month ago when it showed up in the development bill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is true. And uh, uh, Strider, uh, to your point, I haven't reported the bug with the uh, K disk mark because someone else already did. In August, mm. the developer replied five days ago and it's still not fixed. <laughs> and apparently it's not just uh, MD raids, uh, it's also encrypted. Like, if you have full disk encryption, it also doesn't see it. I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's an issue. <laughs> I'm trying to go back and look for something Chibsy said. Let's see, did we get any, um, hmm. because F audio makes a Mad Max, closingly. <laughs> <laughs> that was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> closingly. <laughs> it's not free. Yeah, it's, it, it's great. You set up pie hole and then... You can oh, either, Netlocks! Uh, I, That's the name of the company, sorry! <laughs> <laughs> that made those plates. <laughs> what was it? Metlocks. They're, they, Metlocks. They're, their facility is here in in uh, SoCal. In fact, it's like a... It used to be about four miles from me. <laughs> we had uh, friends uh, that worked at Mattel that worked at Metlocks. So I knew it had an M in it, but I couldn't remember the name. <laughs> That's the name of the company that made those plates that everyone has used. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Boo. Well, yeah, with Pi Hole, you can set um, DHCP mode, but I don't trust it yet to do that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I just like my phone and uh, Nori's tablet. I'll just uh, change the DNS <laughs> address to the Pi Hole. So, oh, look at that. No ads. <laughs> Someone find me some for sale. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with the uh, ones with go. the blue uh, flowers. Had, uh, yeah, <laughs> the one with the um, greenish flowers around the the outside. Oh I yeah, too. <laughs> I had the blue flowers. Never had the brown one. A lot of people. I went to a lot of people's houses without the brown, but. At the blue, but when Steve and I bought this house, we wanted to get much nicer <laughs> plateware. I really need to pee. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> but Metlocks makes good, you know, they're really, they're, they're, they're great if you have kids because they're light. The plates are light. And if you drop them, they don't shatter unless they're like 20 or 30 years old. And then they'll finally start deteriorating. <laughs> mm. I don't know if I... I I've had one since I've been here, but I don't know mm. where it came from. <laughs> oh, nice computer kid. Thank you for coming to our post show. <laughs> he always watches the shows every week. Mm. Corningware? I don't know, man. Oh, Corningware is another company that made them, but originally Matlocks is the one that made those designs. And a lot of other companies copied. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's ever researched it. 
do, 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 do. What exactly is the pattern? <laughs> That's a looks like a heart or heart on flowers or something. They're flowers. <laughs> it's a little flower with I'm guessing it's supposed to be a butterfly of some sort. It's a uh, flower butterfly plate. Just in case Google pulls up something wrong when I'm searching, let's not have that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so true, Chibsy. <laughs> I've seen him at the dollar store. <laughs> yeah, St Steve and I, we have some really heavy duty, I'm forgetting the name of them. It's a, a modern, uh, a company that makes very modern plateware and. We wanted something heavy. There we go. Now Dansk. Some... Yeah, really nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, you're getting down to the weeds with it now. Uh, it's me, man. Come on. I don't yeah, like this. Butterfly gold. Stuff. <laughs> butterfly gold line. That Those ones are the Corel. Okay. Because, yeah, there were... <laughs> Did well from most popular. If you grow up eating meals on butterfly golds, <laughs> introduced in 1970, hit their peak in the 80s. Around that time, 35% uh, of American households. <laughs> I guess that might. <laughs> yeah. 75 million. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Oh, computer kid, I guess it didn't, that emoji. <laughs> oh, no, uh, the emoji is the bot doesn't yeah, <laughs> like them it doesn't. very much. <laughs> Certain ones will pass, but yeah. not all of them. And computer kid, I have an emoji cup. This <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that picture. I think Steve posted a picture of you in the children's toy section. I was like, yeah, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so I have a couple different emoji cups. That was the Dollar Tree, which, you know, I don't go shopping much these days because of pandemic. Um, but that is one within walking distance of our house. So I, it's a fun place to go once a week and look at trinkets and cheap stuff. <laughs> but sometimes you find good things there. Oh, yeah, apparently you can still buy them, but they're on back order. Damn. All right. <laughs> People really <laughs> like them for some reason. <laughs> this is why I end up knowing like random stuff. I don't know when to <laughs> like, all right, I, I gotta figure this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, Steve has been. <laughs> I would have walked right up to you and said, May the force be with you. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I got lots of looks in the store, you know, oh. from those were Star Trek fans. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank you, computer kid. Yeah, my sister in law made that for me. And she makes those, so if you want one, I can I can uh give you she's selling them on her um that's a Instagram site. Oh, Instagram. Yeah. You can sell stuff on Instagram now? Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> huh? it doesn't the only thing I know about proper. Instagram is every time I go to check out an Instagram <laughs> post, like maybe once every three months, Instagram lights up. It's like, did you know someone logged into your account? I'm like, yeah, I do. Oh, I know. Yeah, I get that too. <laughs> I don't go there that often. <laughs> that's where everyone moved to from f f those, all the kids that were on Facebook moved to Instagram. And I kind of stayed away from it, but I, I do have an account and I, I have some followers in the Linux community and my family. <laughs> Arthur, there and so true. Yeah, I do need a Star Trek sippy cup. Actually, Computer Kid, I do have one from the 60s in my Star Trek uh, metal Star Trek lunchbox. It came with, um, a, actually it was a, a um, 
combination of metal and plastic sippy cup. <laughs> Do, 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 but, oh, come but on, it's Domino's, a collectible, really? so I probably won't okay. use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dinner what dinner what is the mean, pizza. mean, big, bad Domino's done to you again? <laughs> I no, get... it's like I was about to place the order. It's like, oh, we've changed our security policy. You gotta change your password. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Denying you the greasy... Is... Pizza, yeah, pizza. That's why it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, admittedly, <laughs> too much grease can ruin a pizza. Pizza Hut, seriously? Stop. <laughs> That's too much. Yeah. Um, I have, I have a not nice name for them. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you later, Pedro. <laughs> I can't stand greasy. Ugh. Ugh. When it's dripping. Oh. An HP laptop with a corrupt BIOS to work again. Um, have you tried giving it a hug? <laughs> uh, got an HP laptop with a corrupt BIOS. How are uh, how, all right? Seriously, how good did you at working um hot air flow station? <laughs> probably gonna be that. How broken is it? <laughs> oh, that's good to because know, Novadel. <laughs> if you can still get into the boot thing you can create a usb drive with just the bios file and the bios will attempt to flash itself from the usb most laptops not all but at least the enterprise ones do if it sees a fat 32 mm -hmm. formatted flash drive and it sees the bios file in it it will try and flash itself but e even if the boot thing is corrupt Sometimes it works. <laughs> Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Jibs, what did you do? Buy like a pilot of them, man? <laughs> the suspense is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All is seem typing. to have the same error. Mirror's <laughs> typing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Computer Kid, that was a fun segment, wasn't it? <laughs> Jensen's Gym Adventure. <laughs> what was it about? <laughs> the the new uh, uh, GPUs. <laughs> you were talking about his leather jacket. <laughs> I don't remember anything that goes on in these shows. <laughs> <laughs> ben has a short memory, I that Computer was my Kid. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I sold, I had uh, four keys to uh, unlock the uh, CSGO crates. Apparently, it's a really old crate that some people still have in their inventories, and Valve is not selling those keys anymore. So there's no option but the market. And I wasn't even. I didn't. I wasn't even aware of that. And I was just looking through my items. It's like, okay, what's the priciest one? I didn't even check the keys. I just checked the weapons. It's like, oh, okay, so two pounds for the priciest weapon. <clears throat> eh, whatever. Uh, I finally click on a key. It's like, uh, I'm sorry, six pounds eighty five <laughs> for one of these that I got for free. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, I, I was just pasting it as, as well, Ben. It's like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, six pound sixty six uh, per key for four keys. <laughs> oh, Jordan. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cause his he's been doing the gyms. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan. I went looking. I didn't know um, because I saw you posted that in Discord earlier. And it's like, mm -hmm. A, it took me a minute to find out where that was in Steam because I pay no attention to like. <laughs> I, I knew where the gifts That's were, and it's it. like yeah, you had to do the sort by like which one. Yeah. It's one of these probably, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh there it is. All right. 
I still have some gift copies of uh, mm-hmm. Payday 2. I think I have like two copies of Torchlight 2. Um, other <laughs> stuff. I don't even know how I have it. Um, I have that island. Uh, with that beta they did. Epidemic. Uh, uh-huh. the, like the uh, mobile one that nev- yeah. nothing ever came of it. Uh-huh. But they, they, they started it. <laughs> It'd be interesting if, um, that's something I've been meaning to try and see if we can get a Dead Island multiplayer working with Proton and maybe it would have a chance. <laughs> a better chance at least. <laughs> we, we did a solid hour of recording of nothing to, but just trying to connect. We, we would have had better luck playing Goat Simulator in the MMO. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we would have found each other so much earlier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Steve has been the main reason you have a Steam account is so that we could play golf with your friends together in multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's Doesn't why. Doesn't that have there. a local mode? <laughs> yeah, like it does. Hot seat, you go, now I go, now you go, now I go. No, it was my excuse to get him a Steam account. And actually, I put a couple um, games in there that he he might want to play in the future. So, <laughs> but he's he's never really used it. <laughs> it's mostly Jill's, and and I have I have mine. I have a Linux Chicks one for when we go to to scale because I didn't want people having access to my own account. <laughs> and then um, Steve's. <laughs> I created a secondary Steam account a long time ago. (laughs) I saw it the other day uh, on my friends list. Oh, (laughs) 1,764 days since I last logged into that account. Okay. (laughs) Matthew, (laughs) you also have a Lutris account. (laughs) Oh no. <laughs> oh, by the way, Strider, uh, is Lutris going to get uh, two factor authentication at any point? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I use my Lutris account um, almost daily. <laughs> Let's just say after 400 and something hours spent in Lutris over the past. Yep. Six months? <laughs> Ish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to get a bit conscious. Let's <laughs> good to keep track of him, and there's a new product. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I started my account, I had a... I, I used... that Back then, I was using Jill.LinuxGirl, and it is, I, I couldn't create an account with Jill.LinuxGirl, and Matthew had to... had fit, went ahead and fix that. We couldn't, it was, it was very strange. So it's still Jill Dodd, even though I use Jill underscore Linux girl now. But that was, that was a long time ago when I first met Matthew. <laughs> I have exactly we two Steam accounts. <sighs> I have the initial Steam account I had to create when I got Skyrim. Because that was the mm-hmm. first update to the game, was to tie the <laughs> physical media copy to Steam. I was like, that's lovely. The reason I bought this is not to have to deal with that steam thing extra with wine and that was part of the reason why i like buying games on gog it's like if i'm going to run them in wine i'd rather just have the gog installer that i can inno extract and Ah. there we go (laughs) the django that's right yeah django the django url conf i remember that now matthew (laughs) was so long ago (laughs) okay 2fa at some point I'll take it at some point. <laughs> yeah. No, I knew he, he had mentioned that he was was working on that at some point. Well, I mean, it's Lutris. It's one of the Who goals. are you going to lose if somebody gets into your account? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, admittedly, I only launched the one game from Lutris, but it is the one game that I've played the most lately, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> But I still have it, and I still have my, I think, my picture thumbnail on that account is the one with me and Matthew uh, at the very first convention. 
very first scale we met at. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a Lutris account. If you're watching, uh, you know, <laughs> a live stream yeah. of a podcast about Linux news, you probably have a Lutris account. <laughs> you probably do. I, I have to decrypt mine. I, I have to brute force the emails until eventually it sends me. It's like, hey, you have an account on this one. I'm like, all right. Oh, computer kid. You'll have to get an account and then you can talk to Matthew, who is the creator of Lutris, the Strider in chat. That's who Lutris is. <laughs> yeah, even Steve has an account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. He didn't know anything about it until Strider created it, but yeah. <laughs> you know and has all my steam my steam profile in there <laughs> so yeah I, I have made a suggestion in um valve's uh github for proton because there are a lot of games that don't have cloud saves but since proton creates the prefix and you can account exactly for what that prefix has Oh, it yeah. It would be relatively easy to figure out, oh, there's a new folder here. That's probably where the game is saving the configurations and the save files and everything else. So can we have a Steam Cloud? I'll gladly use the however many gigabytes of free space that I have in my Steam Cloud for you to let me save my games that don't have uh, yeah, Steam Cloud that saves. Would be that would be brilliant. Yay, Matthew's working on that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that'd that be would awesome, Strider, actually. <laughs> it's always fun when you find out that oh, guess that didn't have a cloud save. I know. It, especially when you you, <laughs> you you reformatted the drive and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot about that game. I don't I have to replay it. I made it. the mistake <laughs> of uninstalling Dark Souls 3 on this box. Thinking, yeah, uh, they have Steam input, they have everything else, they probably have cloud save. They don't. Yeah, they don't. I've they really a, don't. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple games so that are almost my, finished. <laughs> my new game plus character is just gone Aww, now. <laughs> poor Pedro. Yeah, I've had that a few times, so now I'm, I check. <laughs> I, I check and I make backups. <laughs> like, I, I have my original Portal 2... Uh, backups from that folder because uh, when they did an update it, it had scr screwed it up and it didn't go it didn't show my end play the last few scenes and so I brought those in and since then it's been fixed but that was an issue for a while <laughs> and I think it's because I had so many saves that it just like I'm not gonna handle this anymore it was too much <laughs> but Valve since fixed uh, that a lot thing, of people yeah, were complaining uh, I <laughs> <laughs> I need to set up something like Sync Thing or the other one that we talked about um, on Linux Gamecast Weekly. Yeah, that's good, Animex. That yeah, Sync Thing's great. Actually does that. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, Sync Thing. It's been, around, it's been around a long time and I've been using it. God. Yeah, Authy yeah. is take the time to move everything over to Authy. <laughs> it saves you a lot of time going forward. <laughs> like oh. a lot of time. <laughs> that, that's definitely, um, it took you a year, but yes. <laughs> Authy is definitely the business when it comes to, uh, just can't be have to deal with it. Google Authenticator, man. That, it's that's, Google too. They could have easily set it to cloud sync to your yeah. account, but no. That we're that's Google. Per we're device. dumber than a bag of hammers. <laughs> I had I had this Arcos Ten that had the authenticator with too much on it, and that's what got me over to Authy because I was tired of <laughs> the sole purpose of that tablet was to be cut on for authentication codes. That's the only reason I had to charge. It was junk for everything it was running it was my android flip phone <laughs> my android flip phone was my key ring it's like <laughs> okay <laughs> but yeah Audi is everywhere 
which is great. I like it. Mm -hmm. I found that. Uh, I found the Android flip phone. Huh. Oh, you can export your tokens now? It's too late, man. <laughs> it's too late. I'm not going back to that. You found... I thought you organized everything, Mr. Pedro. <laughs> I did. I just don't remember which drawer I organized it to. Okay. <laughs> Things changed places. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Ta -da. Oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> it's a shame that the uh, person who was working on the unofficial Lineage OS port uh, for this phone kind of stopped. Because it was really nice having Android 8 on this. <laughs> but yeah, it's still it's still running uh, Lineage OS. Which one was uh, the Android 8 equivalent? 14? <laughs> I'm running 14 on the... Um, wait, no, I think I'm running 12 on the um, Amazon tablet. Hmm. Yeah, I have 12 on one of mine. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. It's, uh, I think it does like marshmallow or something like that. But you know what? Yeah. It works. The shield tablet I have on my uh, bedside table is um, running 15. Unofficial. Mm -hmm. Because the person who was working on the official ones also gave up. <laughs> We're almost at the end time, kids. Any famous last words? <laughs> Aw, thanks everyone for uh, joining us. It was fun as always. What was the uh, the joke with the famous last words of the captain of the Titanic? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's no way a ship this big can sink. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> Until it hits an iceberg. <laughs> Until it Aww. hits something that's several magnitudes bigger. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Art there, and I love it. Well, tell that to the uh, Lusitania. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, Steve will probably chime in, knowing what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> I mean, I'm Portuguese. That's uh, it's, that's. The old Lusitania. Um. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Um, I think that is going to conclude our broadcasting day. Mm. Everyone have mm -hmm. a fantastic. Still going afternoon. through Young Blood. What? Still going through Young Blood with Jordan. We'll be back. I didn't watch tomorrow. the last stream, so I didn't check to see if you guys had finished it. <laughs> it's always great, man. I, I, I love it. Like when Pedro is awake and active, no participation in chat, none. <laughs> hey, <laughs> two weeks ago, I was in the moderator queue. <laughs> I was in the moderator queue, approving the ones that people, yeah, like all caps. <laughs> the um, that that's the only thing. Like, I'm in the moderator. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bye, computer week after kid. next uh, Bye, Arthurn. Bye, DeCrisney. If everything is to be believed, um, we'll get the Bye, Left 4 Dead 2 update. Yeah, yeah, very cool. The Last Stand. Which we all just quietly uh, assume is going to work on Linux. And Serious Sam should be coming soon. That's what I'm waiting for. Which we also assume will work on Linux. Uh... <laughs> If it is just an update for the game, I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, it's yeah. If it doesn't, when it releases, I've they will soon in after. I think. To not have <laughs> yeah. Assumptions anymore. Well, the Cirrus engine works very good in Proton too. So, but this is the Cirrus new Cirrus engine. Cirrus M4. <laughs> yeah. We'll see, and I will happily give them money once they have Linux support, so... Yes. That's it. All right, everyone. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you.